Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at the NVIDIA Jetson Xavier NX right after this. I'm not going to do a software review today. I'm just going to step through the hardware. Uh, these came out, I think, about mid-May, something like that, of this year. And so they are they're relatively new. They're not too hard to get yet, but uh, I just wanted to go through some of the specs of the hardware, some of the features, and, and, some, and what the purpose of this device is actually for. So it comes as it, there are two units you can purchase, uh, two types. There is the... Uh, Jetson Xavier NX development kit, which is what's shown here, or the uh, NVIDIA Jetson Xavier NX production kit. And the only difference between them is, is that the production kit has a, um, it has a inbuilt uh, um, uh, EEMC card, which allows, I think it's 16 gig, which allows you to, it, you know, that's more robust. It's, it can handle more writes than an SD card does. But uh, the uh, development board uses an SD card. And so, yeah, it's a UH-1 that you'll need, a UH-1 spec for that. And you have to be careful with some of them because I have run into some issues with some of the cheaper cards. Uh, but the ones from uh, Samsung and uh, SanDisk, those seem to be just fine. Some, some of the higher, you know, they seem to be just fine as long as they're UH, UH-1 uh, compatible. But there's two components. Uh, besides the, the other parts, there's two main components we want to talk about. And the first is the module. The, uh, the compute module actually, or the SOC, actually comes on a DIMM SOC, which is uh, the, where you'll find the Xavier NX module with the heat sink. Then there's a carrier board, which has the peripheral devices uh, that you plug it into. So it uses a slot similar to a SODIMM memory board uh, that it plugs into. And then this allows you to... Uh, it, it, like uh, the Jetson Nano and, and that carrier board are compatible with one another, so you can switch them out um, if you wish. Uh, it also takes a 19-volt power supply. It has a power plug for the region. Uh, and then there is underneath, there is an 802.11 uh, Wi-Fi with Bluetooth module that uses a, I think it's a SATA connector uh, for... Yeah, an NV. Uh, yeah, it would be. Yeah, it would be a SATA connector that's underneath there for that, similar to what you would find in a laptop. Uh, it has. Uh, it has a number of operation modes that you can run in. It has a low power mode, a 10 watt mode, and it also has a high power mode or a 15 watt mode. That's all it takes. Uh, they measure the AI performance in in tera operations per second or tops at 14, and those are based on integer 8 arithmetic. Uh, 15 watts, 21 tops uh, with integer 8. Now, if you were to compare this to supercomputers, supercomputers do also measure tops, but they measure it based on floating point 64-bit uh, words. So, yeah, quite a, <laughs> there's quite a difference between integer 8 and floating point 64. So, if you're trying to, you're thinking that this is a 21 top supercomputer, uh-uh, no. <laughs> no, 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 uh-uh. It, it, uh, it has a 384-core NVIDIA Volta uh, GPU with 48 tensor cores built into it. So pretty powerful for uh, a low-cost board like this. The uh, GPU frequencies run at, when you're in 10-watt mode, maximum of 800 megahertz, and at 15 watts, 1,100 megahertz. Now, if you're, if you're using uh, gaming boards like the uh, NVIDIA uh, <laughs> uh, 2080 or 2080 Ti, you're probably laughing, yeah, because they, they operate almost twice as fast as that. But that's all right. Uh, they also have a heck of a lot more cores, too. Um, and they also cost a lot. <laughs> um, Six-core NVIDIA ARM 8.2 uh, is the uh, central processor. And you, at, you can control a couple of different things. So I can control what wattage I want this to run at, and that will drop the frequency count for the GPU down. But you can also control how many processors you want to turn on and off, and that's dynamic. You can do that while the machine is running. So at two cores, you get uh, on 10 watt, it goes to 1.5 gigahertz. At four cores, it goes only to 1.2 gigahertz. Um, 
at 10 watts. And at 15 watts, you get your maximum performance with two cores at 1.9 gigahertz. And uh, you can also have four cores or the full eight, uh, full excuse me, full six cores at 1.4 gigahertz. So that's as fast as it will go. Uh, it uses uh, 8 gig, 128-bit uh, LPDDR at 1600 megahertz. And that will allow it to run at 51 gigabytes per second, which is respectable. Uh, <clears throat> now, they're talking about the storage here for the EMMC card, and uh, the development kit, as I said, comes with an SD slot, so it doesn't have the EMMC. Only the production model has that. Operates in two power modes, which we talked about. And the PCIe bus is Gen 3. There is a 1x1, which is where the WLAN board is plugged into. And then there's a 1x4 that you can use to plug in an NVMe SSD. Uh, and that will take a full-length SSD. Uh, yes. Uh, the CSI cameras, you can have up to six. And there are 12 lanes uh, available to you, up to 30 gigabits per second. Uh, in code, you can do two 4K 60 at, at 30 frames per second, six 1080 at 60 frames, or 14 1080 at 30 frames per second. And then uh, uh, decode, you can do two at uh, uh, of two 4K at 60 uh, uh, frames per second, or four at uh, 30 and at, at for 4K at 30 frames per second, or 12 1080p at 60, or 32 1080p at 30. So there's a there's a quite a bit of of uh, power within this little board. It has uh, two display uh, connectors. One is the Display Port uh, 1.4, and the other one is an HDMI 2.0. There are two DLA images, uh, DLA engines, and uh, there's a seven-way vision processor, uh, which would, of course, be used for AI uh, uh, facial recognition or uh, tracking objects as they move through a space or tracking people as they move through a space. It has a uh, one, gig, uh, one gigabit per second Ethernet connector, which can also operate at slower speeds. It is a square about, about like that. You know, it's, it's not very big. Uh, it doesn't take up a, a huge footprint at all. The block diagram of the of the machine, as we mentioned, was we have the uh, ARM uh, version 8.2 CPU, which is attached to the memory controller fabric, along with the 384 core of the GPUs. The two NVDLAs are also attached to that fabric, and then the multimedia complex comes down into the video ingest, which is then attaches to the, the fabric as well. And those, of course, would be decoding and encoding imagery and video as it comes in from the cameras. Uh, and then across, the, you have your 8 gig of RAM, of course, and then your PCI slots. You have four USB 3.1, your, um, your uh, display port, and your EDP and HDMI connectors. And then you have your by four CSI connectors. Uh, that you can attach cameras to. It will take the Raspberry Pi camera, by the way, uh, if you want to use that. Um, it is, uh, it is de designed for development of AI applications. That's what it's for. Uh, <clears throat> like, I, yeah, we mentioned the production version. The applications are, uh, can be written and coded and compiled on the Xavier NX, and those are code compatible with the uh, Jetson AGX. So. It's kind of meant to you develop. You make your you write your code here, and then when you're ready to deploy, you deploy to your clusters of AGX edge devices when you're ready to go. The development stack is quite extensive. Uh, you have, of course, Linux, which was developed specifically for this chip. It is a Tegra uh, that, of course, is is developed by Nvidia. And the base stack around the the kernel is Ubuntu 18.04. Uh, and, uh, and that, of course, is the long-term release of that package. And, of course, it's the uh, ARM 64-bit Arch uh, uh, architecture. Uh, the CUDA toolkit is used, of course, to write applications that run on the, graphic, on the GPU itself. And uh, there's also Tensor Real-Time and there's also Tensor Flow. Those are used to, to do machine learning. 
within the system. GStreamer, of course, is a video processor for streaming video. VisionWorks allows you to write applications to do facial recognition or tracking of facial objects. Like uh, there's one demo where they're tracking the, the subject's gaze as they're looking into a kiosk. And based, if they're looking at the screen, then it will trigger and start displaying things for them. I assume that you could probably do facial recognition too and determine what that person is interested in and then and key the kiosk to be able to do it. Then you have OpenCV, which is computer vision applications. That would be, of course, for cars. Or one application would be for uh, self-driving cars, of course, or robots. Uh, DeepStream and uh, VPI. There's also OpenGL and Vulkan is also supported natively on the box. Uh, the L4T is kind of the base engine for uh, the vision applications and the handling of the cameras. Uh, there is also Night Sight system, Insight and Graphics, and Insight, sys Insight systems. Uh, the SDK manager is kind of interesting. Um, I'll probably get into more of these aspects of the different packages when we get down and look at the software, but there are two ways you can deploy the, the machine. So you can download the SDK directly from the website, and then you can just plug it in, power it up, and go. But if you want, and that will give you everything. Uh, everything is on that SDK. All of the software stack is there. But if you're more interested in tuning and just bringing down the components that you want, there is a version of the Jetpack uh, host, that they call it, and that is an x86-based uh, uh, build. It's an ISO uh, that you run on your x86 boxes, and then you plug in the, uh, and the uh, uh, Jetson uh, Xavier NX into a USB port on your box, and then you can, you can manually build up the SDK with the uh, software stack components that you want, so you can tailor it to the type of AI that you want to learn or work on. So, yeah. And then there's also a container runtime, and we'll talk about that when we uh, when we get into the cloud uh, portions of this. So there's also BERT, uh, and BERT is the onboard assistant. That is a demo currently. Uh, that is a low latency. They say about five nanoseconds it takes between the time that you speak, it recognizes what you said, and then looks up the answer to the question. And of course, that's primitive. I mean, it's looking basically for your question and then an answer to respond to it. But that it, it simulates intelligent human-machine interaction and then it, it provides conversational AI. But like I said, it's, it's, it does not need the cloud. So this is not like your phone. It isn't going back and taking your voice, passing it to the cloud and having it decoded. No, the machine is decoding your, your speech uh, and is performing the recognition directly on, on the machine. So... Yeah, I, I know that's not that's not a earth-shaking thing today, but it is for this size box. Uh, cloud native. Uh, so one of the big problems that we've had uh, with applications that are embedded or run on edge devices is that they're monolithic and they're awfully big. And and the bigger the application is, the more complexity you have, the less of it you can test, and so the more buggier it becomes. <laughs> so and that and. And they're not really intended to be frequently updated. AI applications are. They need to be frequently updated. In monolithic systems, you have to take down, you got to replace them, and you got to bring them back up. So you have an outage there, and that's why they're not really meant to take down and bring up. But cloud native allows for this update to occur constantly and without interruption. So. Uh, it, and it uses a containerized framework to do that. There's a pre-trainer for the AI modules that are hosted uh, in the NVIDIA's NGC. Now, of course, that's going, that's walking down the line into the NG, uh, into the NVIDIA space, but uh, you can use that if you want. Um, that is a, an option that's available to you uh, if you don't want to deploy your own hardware. <clears throat> So my next steps is I want to get the software demo up and working. I've only had this a couple of days, uh, and I, I have installed it. I have it up and have it running, but have not really spent enough time. I like to spend time with things before I start to review how, how effective they are. So, uh, yeah, I want to do the demo and look at that and show that to you, and I want to look at some a couple of AI applications and how easy that might be to write uh, on this board and how much time it takes to compile. But the other thing I'd like to do is take a look at this from the standpoint of using this as a desktop replacement. Because of the video encoders, 
it might be a natural to uh, replace the, this older machine that I have here uh, and maybe use it as a desktop replacement for producing videos. There is a family of products. Now, I don't have the Tegra on here. There's a Tegra 2 that's also available. It's an older machine. Uh, there was a Tegra 1 and a TX, I think, uh, that preceded all these. I think those, I think the TX and the Tegra 1 are no longer supported, but the ones that are are the Nano, the Tegra 2, uh, the, the NX, of course, and then the AGX, which was introduced last year. Uh, so the Nano is a 4 gig machine. It <clears throat> does not have any ability to do NVMe. So, yeah, that, that machine is strictly SD card or you plug in a USB disk or you connect it to a network. Uh, but it is only it only runs at 0.1 tops. Uh, so it's, its performance is quite a bit less than the uh, Xavier NX. And then, like we said, the Xavier NX is an eight gig machine uh, of memory and it operates at either 10 or 20 uh, tops. Uh, the, the Xavier AGX is a 30 to 45 watt machine. And that operates in, in the neighborhood of 40 to, I think it's, I'd have to go look, 35 to 50 is what I'm going to say. It runs for, on the low power side, 35 tops to the high, high power side of 50. And that's really meant to be a deployment machine, an edge machine. But it can use it for development too, if you wish. I mean, it, I mean it, there's no, it does have the same capabilities, although uh, it does not have a... Uh, it does not have a means of uh, uh, taking an SD card and installing it directly on the machine. You have to set up the uh, Jetpack host in order to deploy to it. So it's a little bit more complex to use. Uh, but anyway, I'll, I'll get into that more as we get down the down the road with this. And uh, I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'll spend some time with this and, and look at it from a kind of a, the AI side of things, the development side of things, but then I want to look at it from a more impractical side, <laughs> using it for a desktop and seeing how well that goes. Uh, if you're wondering how it compares to a Raspberry Pi, a Raspberry Pi is a toy compared to this because the, uh, the graphics processors on ARM are like the graphics processors on Intel, uh, not very good, so not very fast. Uh, so anyway, hope you enjoyed this today. If you did, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you all again real soon, and bye for now.